for the first time ever on YouTube, never done before here, the top 10 gaming components right here, right now. How's it going everyone? I am Dylan, this is my friend Brayden, this is All You Can Board, and today we have a really special video. We are doing our top 10, five each, greatest board game components of all time. Now this was, it was a meticulous process. Uh, it took, we, there's this website called Pub Meeple, I, we, we mentioned it a couple times, where you can put in a whole bunch of, uh, you know, board games, whatever, movies, and it competes against, uh, against each other 1v1, and it sort of formulates a list for you. But mm -hmm. th the more things you enter in, the longer it takes to do the process. Yeah. Like, I think for my, our top 50 of all time, it took me, uh, it, was a, it was a while. So for this one, this uh, beats all records. We put in over 1 million board game components. Uh, when did we even start this Pub Meeple ranking? I think... How long is it? It's, this is 2023 right now. Yeah. yeah. So, 2006? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds right. I, yeah. I just graduated high school. Yeah. yeah. I don't even think we had met at that time. No, but no. We, you know, we, we were kind we of started, started our own. Yeah. yeah. We were just looking to the future, you know, even more yeah. so than our peers. So. Yeah. And really amalgamated things together. And Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it took a long while to finish that. And list. here we are. And it's going to be it's going to be great. There's no other video like this on YouTube. We're looking mm -hmm. at board game components of this meticulously. We've narrowed it down to, we think it's pretty definitive. Normally we say, you know, grain of salt, it's our opinions. But this yeah. one, I think, is definitive. This oh. is the top 10 greatest board game components of all time. Yeah, this is exhaustive from top to bottom. Yeah. We've really done our research. You know, this this counts for the past as well as going into the future, too. Oh, yeah. And we'll be updating this uh, all, probably weekly, I would yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to throw it to you first. Yeah. Okay, number, yeah, sure. Number five top board game components okay. of all time. Okay. Um, I, I don't think this one's going to be a big surprise for a lot of people. Um, for me, number five has got to be the tiles from Azul. Now, I think really what makes these special is just that tasty factor to them, right? Um, they've got, you know, they're very juicy, they, they've got great color to them, and I think that they do a fantastic job of making you almost want to eat them. Like, <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't eat them, uh, because I think I'm a little bit smarter than that, but I, I think, you know, I think they, they do a great job of just the board presence, they have that clack to them, you know, they've, they've got that tactile feel that I think are unlike any other board game um, component that I've come across of, which really makes it an easy way to go and put them into my number five spot. Um, you know, compared to some of the other Azul tiles out there too, just the original really, really, really nails it off the hop. And I, I couldn't agree more with it just being so just deliciously tasty and amazing. Like I couldn't think of a better board game component, especially for the first game too. Like those other Azuls, they are good. They look good. I mean, Queen's Garden has got some like patterns to them, but I don't think any of the other ones really um, compare. The tactile feel of the tiles, they didn't need to make them this chonky, this delicious bite-sized bits that again, I would never, never ever eat. Uh, they just, they do such a great job of giving you that feel, and that's why they're really my number five for game one, two, five. Did, did you eat it? No. So that's my number five game component of uh, 2023, that, yeah, you take it, keep, keep that one. I'm gonna put it over here so I don't get tempted again. Yeah, please. Um, all right, my number five uh, is a game, or a component from the game Picture, which is a super popular party mm. game. Um, obviously lots of great components in there, but I had to go with the longer oh. shoelace from Pictures. So, uh, and I'm picking this for a lot of reasons. First of all, it's the most malleable of every single component in the box. So, whereas the blocks, you know, you can only stack, you can't really do much with them. Yeah. This, you can p basically make any shape you want out of it. But more than that, is that I bought Pictures to add obviously another party game to my collection, one that I could play more frequently. What ended up happening is I barely even play the game, but I ended up just buying a brand new shoelace and probably one of the best shoelaces that I've actually had in a long time. I quickly replaced the shoelace in my right shoe. I was already looking up to see if I could find another copy of pictures so that I could get mm. a second long shoelace to put on my left shoe. Um, honestly, it's just, it's a, a versatile component that not only ended up being a board game component, it kind of ended up being an apparel component. And what it ended up making me think is that, you know, at some point we have the possibility also to diversify and actually just start an apparel uh, YouTube channel that strictly focuses 
on reviewing shoelaces. So if you would like to see that, I mean, put it in the comments below. It, the more support we get, the more we'll start as like an all-you-can-shoe channel or something like that. I mean, better name yeah. than that. But reviewing shoelaces, because this is honestly, this would be a 10 out of 10. This would be probably my on my top 50. This might be right now number one of all shoelaces I've used. Yeah, and I quickly want to add too, I remember playing uh, pictures at your house. Yeah. We, you, we did end up taking the shoelace off your shoe. Mm -hmm. um, and I had so much fun playing pictures, but really what drew me, like you said, was the shoelace. So oh, I yeah. actually, for that specific reason, I, I bought my own copy and got just, my own shoe, just for the shoelace, yeah. literally for the shoe. I remember we were playing we yeah. were playing it here and at one point Carlos was like, where is Brayden? And you were there like lacing my shoe with it. Yeah. It, it was just so good. It's a, it, it's a shame that it doesn't, like it comes with another shoelace, but it's just short. I know, they, it's yeah. an oversight, but it, and yeah. also, I mean, coy on their part because then they get me to buy two copies. Right? That is true, that's a, that's a ploy. <laughs> yeah. I'm on to you. Uh, so that is number five, the shoelace, the longer shoelace from pictures. Okay, my number four component of all time comes from the game Pandemic Legacy Season 1, Blue Edition, specifically Blue Edition, first printing, and it is the Red Cubes from there, and you can see they're very small, but they're gonna be up on screen now. Yep. And one thing that I think a lot of people don't realize from Pandemic Pandemic Legacy Season 1. Uh, blue Edition. No, yeah, Blue first Edition, printing. first printing, thank yep. you. Specifically, um, and no spoilers here, um, these cubes really set themselves apart. Now, one thing people don't realize with some of the other cubes, mm -hmm. they're squishy. They, feel, they don't feel right. They may feel solid to you, but I have this extra sensory touch that uh, I was born with. And I can tell when oh, things wow. compact even just the slightest mm. amount. And I have to say, these red cubes, specifically from the first edition, first edition printing from the blue, blue version of Pandemic Legacy season one, yep. are immaculate. The shape, the, the texture, it, it brings me into the game like no other. And, and it's funny because I wasn't born with like extra sensory powers, but in uh, when I was playing, this was like years ago when I was, I think 2016 when I played my edition, I remember I picked the red cubes, not just because like I always pick red, but also because the other ones just didn't feel right. And the person I was playing with even said a couple of times, like what's wrong with my cubes? Yeah. And so you're right, like I, you have to go with the red ones. Yeah, and they, they, they've done a better job with season two and season yeah. zero, but I have to go with the OGs that's really blazed the trail here. An easy pick for my number four. Oh, honestly, I, I, the oversight. I probably should have put this on mine. I didn't even think of this. So that's good. I'm glad, I'm glad one, of us had, one of us had it. Yeah. That's great. That's my number four, the Red Cubes from Pandemic Legacy Blue Version, first printing. Amazing. Okay, my number, what is it, four? Four. Is uh, a great, so I, I know I'm gonna get some flack every, from you and Carlo will give me the most flack. I always have to mention a feast for Odin in every uh, video, but yes. in this specific case, I am the only owner of this component because this isn't just a component oh. from Feast for Odin, it's a misprinted component from my copy of Feast for Odin, and that is the oversized yellow meeple. I even brought another one here so that you can compare and see the difference in size here. So this just makes my edition of Feast for Odin better than everybody else's edition, so every time I pull out my copy, I just feel, it feels really special to be able to get to the table. Yeah. But more than that is, if you don't know, every time we play board games, Carlo always picks orange or yellow. And so he always picks the yellow components. And so that means every time I play Feast Road, not only do I get to play my favorite game, I get to make fun of Carlo for his stupid looking component, yeah, which is fat, great. Yeah, stubby Viking. Yeah, the one that's like just off from everyone else, the misprinted one, I get to point at him and be like, oh, you got the misprinted component again, right? Which is just, that's that's half the reason I even put Feast Road so high on my list and want to get it to the table all the time, is just because I get to bug Carlo. Yeah, this, and so. I think it, it totally makes sense now. Right? I didn't really actually get why you put Feast Road mm -hmm. so high. It's not even on my top 50. Yeah, um, I mean, like the game's okay. There's just like, there's so many action spaces. I can't yeah. even, half the time I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just putting put things, but the fact that I can look over to Carlo's player board and just start snickering because I see this this doesn't even fit on the feast board spaces. Really? So every time he puts it there, wow. I can I can even try to contest the fact that technically he this one you have to feed two Vikings for instead of just one because it takes over two spots, right? So it's a, it's just it makes it makes playing against Carlo it takes it to a whole other level. But I can see why you would add it to your, your list. It brings a unique 
mm -hmm. factor to who else has this? I mean, if you have exactly. if you have a misprinted component like this, uh, you know, like in the same way, maybe of a different color, let me know because I actually would love to collect one of these of every color too, yeah. just for collectors. But they're probably something. lying because this is it's the true. only one. Yeah, it's the only one. This is the only one, and yeah. that's why I had to put on this list. It slides in at number four. Honestly, probably could have a little been a little bit higher, but you know, I'm happy with where it ended. Wow. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm surprised about this one, but um, you know, now that you've kind of given your argument, it makes sense. Yeah. So that is Feast for Odin, misprinted meeple in Dylan's a specific edition. Number four. Dylan edition. Okay, Dylan my edition. number three. This one, I, we, we talked about the first four and five, and th those were kind of on their own tier. I think the next few really start to bring mm. that next level right. for me. So my number three game component of all time is the number 17 block from Jenga Mark Two edition. Ooh, okay. Yes, Tell and me I, about this. and and people will say like there are different, there aren't any differences between the blocks, but they're very much oh. so wrong. Where Pandemic Legacy, um, the cubes have this tactile feel to them. Really, what comes down to for block specifically number seventeen, mm -hmm. um, and if you don't, they're marked. You can you can see them. If you don't see them, get your eyesight oh, yeah. checked. You just have to play enough Jenga. And you'll yeah, you yeah. you really you really really start to work it out. Yeah, um, I've played over ten thousand games of Jenga, and let me tell you, my blocks are in pristine condition. Mm. Um, but seventeen really st stood out for me from the very beginning. Um, it, was, it, it's smooth, it, and people would say, "Oh, it, you know, it leads to an advantage and stuff." But you, that's that that's is, part of the Jenga exactly. experience is learning which blocks to place where and which ones are going to be the easiest. You know, half the time when you play Jenga and you're trying to push a block, and like some will push, some don't. Yeah, that's because they're either number seventeen or not number seventeen. Half the time. That's right. Right, and so the th thing I was going to ask you when you brought this up, because I, I saw the Jenga block, and I and I was I, I immediately thought it was going to be Jenga block number nine. Yeah. Because that's every time you see you know people talk about their favorite uh, Jenga blocks, nine's the one that if it doesn't come out on number one, it's usually like in the top couple. Yeah. What? Why? Why did you go with seventeen? Like, why do you shun nine for seventeen? I think I mean nine. I will say was definitely in my consideration. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's probably in my like top fifteen. Okay. Um, Jenga it's blocks. St yeah, I, no, oh, of game components. Game yeah, wow. okay. it, it also it's ranked still high. In there. I was surprised actually when we did those public yeah, rankings yeah. that it Video actually came mm -hmm. that high. Yeah. Um, but for me, the difference between seventeen and nine is is just the the wood grain on it, the sharpness of the edges. True. Um, you know, they're not too sharp where I'm gonna cut myself and bleed all over the no. place. Not, um, not again. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I played yeah. so many games of Jenga. I can't tell you how many times I went to the hospital. <laughs> That's why you have the Mark II box. That's right, exactly. Yeah. I had to, I had to uh, level up, and mm -hmm. I, I fell in love with it immediately. Mm -hmm. um, they're to an unseasoned, untrained eye, they mm -hmm. wouldn't notice the difference between nine and right. seventeen. But some yeah, some trained. would even say they're not numbered. And with your sensory powers too, it just obviously you're going to be the one. Yeah, to, yeah, it really adds to my my personal playing experience, yeah. and probably honestly. I consider this throwing in, go, even moving up into top two. We'll see in future years if it moves up. Yeah. Uh, but a really, really strong contender. It's a strong pick. Yeah, a new echelon for board game components. That's the block number 17 from the game Jenga Mark II. Nice. Great pick. Uh, all right. My number three uh, is from a new game, actually. It's the, from Dice Realms. Obviously, tons of components wow. in that game. It's a game where you're changing out die faces, and they give you one of the best components of all time, the third best on my list, which is the die face remover from Dice Realms. And so the crazy thing about this is that this, there's been a lot of talk and a lot of people asking questions of why do they include so many in the box. The game plays up to four, and I think there's like 30 or 40 of these. There, there's a whole drawer on, your, on the uh, insert that comes with it, just of these. And a lot of people wonder, like, wow. why do I need so many die face removers? And at first, I was one of those people. I remember saying to Carl, like, why are there so many of these in here? And kind of laughing about it. The crazy thing is, is that it's not listed in the rules, but you don't have to leave these in the box. So like I took oh I took all mine out and they're actually in my kitchen uh, like cutlery drawer. Oh, is that like what those were? Next to the spoons. Oh, I didn't. Okay. And and so I use these to open cans. Yeah. I use them to. Uh, the best part is so it actually has an arrow on the other side. Okay. I'm every month I forget. I'm like I'm barely remembering to pay my mortgage. I put the arrow pointing to my wallet, and now every time I walk by, oh my God. it reminds me. Oh. 
shoot, I gotta pay my mortgage, right? I, see, I never considered this, and I, yeah. I I haven't played Dice Realm, so this is why I'm not too familiar with this yeah. component in particular. Yeah, you probably remember, like when you when you used my bathroom uh, yeah. last time we had a uh, game session, that there was one of these pointed at the, the toilet bowl. Right. Yeah, well that's because last time when I had Jake over and he peed in my tub, I was like, I'm not gonna let that happen again, so now it reminds people, this yeah. is where it goes, I mean, to right? fair, I, I almost did it myself, so I, yeah. I'm glad We're that right that was right next to each there. other, it's an easy mistake. So yeah. the fact that you can remove die faces with them, you can use them around the kitchen in the household. I mean, it's, yeah, it, you, there's, Dice Realms cost $100 and a lot of it, you know, there's a lot of uh, flack given to it for costing so much. Yeah. When you really break it down and you think, I'm getting 30 rem die face removers that are essentially, you know, aids for my house now, that the cost, I mean, it pays for itself. It's great. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm super, super intrigued to play Dice Realms now mm -hmm. just because of these. Yeah. Um, and to use them around uh, yeah, you can in my day-to-day -day life. Yeah, you yeah. can borrow some. I've got some extras. And yeah, stuff, that's so. great. Uh, the versatility, I can see easily why this is top three. Yeah, that's my number three board, greatest board game, board game component of all time. Okay, my number two actually has moved up 7,355 spots. Is this your biggest mover? Uh, mm, not quite, mm. but it's my biggest mover inside my top ten. In, yeah, okay. Yeah. Nice. Um, and this one, this one is tricky. So uh, I will say my number two uh, component is from the game Monopoly, specifically Ooh. the Disney version oh, wow. of Monopoly. And it, of course, is the dice. Mm. Yes. The dice. I should have known. The dice. Was oh, right? I, I cannot get over how good the dice are. Well, I mean, like, and there's so many different versions of Mon Monopoly, and like, I, and I've wondered sometimes, you know, like when there's like the, the the Zelda version or the Mario version and the Disney version, you know, how they can justify existing. But a lot of times it's because they all have these unique components. Yeah. Primarily the unique dice. Yeah, I, I've tried over. I think it's around five thousand versions of Monopoly now. Wow. Um, just just or just under. You should do just under. You should have you do a top Monopoly list at oh, some point. That's a good That'd idea. That'd be a great actually. that like top. Top 10, top 20 Monopoly versions of all time. That'd probably, I mean, that'd yeah. probably be a good April Fool's joke, honestly. Yeah, oh. Yeah. Put Not that bad. up for next year, yeah, yeah. that's great. Cool. Um, I think that the dice here are just so, like, the, the, they're blue, first of all. Oh. Ha, how many other dice are blue? I can't remember the last time I've seen a blue die. I don't think I've ever seen one. Never. Except for now, yeah. when I played this version. And they're translucent? They're trans, you can see through them. You can see the other numbers through them as well. Um, they, they, again, they elevate that next, like these, mm. number two for me is one step away from perfection. From right? glory. And yeah. this, this doesn't, almost does not get any better than this. Yeah. Except for my number one, this was so close between the two. Like I said, a huge mover for me, mainly because of how they roll, how they feel in my hand, the the way they roll, and what they bring to the game. I mean, just look at the pips. Oh, and the fact that you can see the pips on the other side. You know how many times I've had to be like, where is the yeah. the five face or whatever? Now you can just be like, oh, it's on the other side of the two. That's right. right? You don't have to remember that. No, I don't want to remember it. Yeah. I got to remember all these other board game yeah. components that I have to rank. Yeah, we don't know who has time for that. that this is a, honestly a great pick. Yeah. I, I, had, I had a few different dice near my, my top five, uh, but they didn't, they didn't crack it. But I actually, I haven't played this version of Monopoly. I think this might have cracked mine if I had. Yeah, it, a superb version. If you haven't tried it out, I would strongly, strongly recommend. Uh, that is specifically the dice. No other component really Just stood up from um, the Monopoly yeah. Disney version. Yeah. It, it, was, it was fine, the but... The paper money is not bad. It's probably the best paper money they have out of any Monopoly version. Actually, but yeah, that is a good point. Yeah. But still, the dice are like... The, di the dice are uh, unbelievable. It doesn't get any better. Nope. Uh, dice Realms, uh, <laughs> this is where the dice are at. Yeah, from absolutely. Monopoly Disney version. The dice, my number two board game opponent of all time. Amazing pick. Uh, all right, my number two uh, is from, you know, Braden, let me ask you a question first. I'll start okay. with this by a question. Hit me. What does the world need more of? Uh, it needs more chocolate. That's, uh, actually, that's a really good answer. That's, it's, that's true, but it also needs more roll and rights, right? Oh, yeah, there's yeah, so yeah. Many, I, that's what I there's said. There's just so many good roll and rights, so I had to put a component from a roll and right on here, and out of every roll and right I've owned, every roll and right I've played, there's one component that stands far and above, up beyond the rest, and that is the pencil from Cartographers. Now, wow. I, there's just something about the way the lead rolls off the tip of this pencil that just every single time I play, I kind of forget I'm playing in a game, and I think I'm just playing pencil. Right. Like, and I feel like that's why I'm here. Like, out of every pencil 
that I've ever had that's ever penciled, this is the best pencil that in the way that it's penciled before. I, I can I can feel its presence, honestly. I know, like, honestly. And it's like, pencil presence. I have not sharpened this once. And no way. Because if I do, I could ruin the integrity of the pencil. And then I've just, well, I'm going to go buy another, I guess I can buy another copy of Cartographers to get another pencil. But who, maybe, maybe. It's not, maybe it's not the same. Yeah. yeah. The, the other three pencils that are in the box aren't actually as good as this one. Like wow. I, I picked this one specifically. So like, I don't want to ruin the integrity of it. I don't want to, every time I use it, I'm scared the little lead tip's going to break off. This is by far the perfect pencil. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I, again, I can feel its pencil presence. Yep. Trademark pending. Yep. Um, and it, like, have you, are you, is it just the writing part of it or is it also, no. do you consider the, the eraser actually, as well? Uh, no, the eraser is subpar. Like, I, honestly, when you write something once with this pencil, pencil you got to get it right because you don't want to have to use the eraser on it. Yeah, that makes uh, sense. Yeah, it's really bad. Uh, but it's also super, super comfortable in your hand. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll have played cartographers and I'll forget, I'll just forget the pencils in my hand. Yeah. And like five hours later, I'll just be on the couch and I'm like, whoa. And the pencil's there. Wow. It, that's how comfortable it is. You wow. can barely even tell. So, yeah, I mean, it's got just so much going for it. Yeah, and I have to say, like, size, it clearly isn't everything here, right? There's no. so much pencil packed into such a particularly puny package. That's why it's, I ranked it above the shoelace. Is the bigger shoelace, yeah. it needed that extra length to kind of push it past the other shoelace. Right. This one, honestly, it is the smallest pencil in that box. Like, what does that tell you? Right? Yeah, it, it's really interesting to me. Um, you know, usually I'm used to working with a little bit larger pencils. So mm. when, you know, when I first put this in my hand, I couldn't believe how easy it was to get through. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it really packs a punch for how small it is. Yep. It's super, super dense. You can almost call it like a densel if you oh. will. Yeah. That, we need to like cut this section out and make sure no one else, like can we patent something based on a YouTube I clip? think so. Maybe yeah. we'll make a whole game mechanic around it too, love called it. Denzel. The Denzel. Yeah. I love it. That's... I think, yeah, a feast for Denzel. Oh, wow. <laughs> a Gricka Denzel. Oh. Yeah. No, I don't like <laughs> Yeah, that's actually, yeah, that's, kind of, that's not great. Nah. Um, yeah, I, I was just so surprised. It's so smooth. A little bit disappointed in the racer, but the rest of that pencil. Makes up for it. Uh, absolutely, yep. by far. That is number two. The cartographer's pencil. Okay, <sighs> on to our number ones. This now. is a big moment, boy. Um, Not even yeah. our number ones. These are the number one. The, num the, the, the definitive time. number mm -hmm. ones. Yep. And pardon me, Ooh, I'm, my stomach's getting so excited I know, I'm already. Nervous. It's yeah, great. butterflies yeah. <laughs> bursting out of my mouth. <laughs> um, uh, you know, since 2006, we've been waiting really for this moment. Yeah. Uh, over one million board game components ranked. And yeah. the top board game component for me, mm -hmm. for me of all time, from my favorite game of all time. Oh, wow. Just one. Okay. Yeah. Some the components. very single Tri Eraser. I should I honestly, from, I should have known. From the red marker. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was actually going to, I thought it was the green one, but red actually, yeah, the red, I, that makes sense now. And I have to say, an exceptional. Craftsman's, mm -hmm. craftsmanship. Yep. I can't even talk. I'm so excited. <laughs> I, I just, I can't get over how beautiful it is. Um, sorry. You're, you're um, okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. If I can get you a tissue or something. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Um, I know it's it's it, it's overwhelming. It, um, you know, this 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 without this, the game really wouldn't exist. No. And. Um, you know, you would have to write so small on the plaque. You would run out of room in like two games. Yeah. So um, it just, it really brings that next level of gaming. It, it, it's, again, I talk about the, the, the touchability factor to it. Yeah, um, so fuzzy. It, the, the squish, the feel is just, it, yeah. it does not get any better. And I mean, how many times have you bought a board game that has a, you know, a dry erase marker or something that you have to erase and then it leaves like all the streaks and everything on it? This eraser, no how, no, no way. Streaks. I mean, and for someone like me who just like, I'm constantly erasing answers because I'm just so bad at it. The fact that every time I erase, I have a clean piece of white plastic that I'm putting back in that box instead of a smeared one. That, that, I mean, that makes all the difference. That's why I play just one. Yeah, I, right. think, I, I think people will discount this and overlook it, but I'm saying to you right now, do not overlook the dry eraser on the red marker for just one, my number one board game component of all time. As a remarkable. Yeah, that's a phenomenal pick. You got me, yeah, got me emotional. Sorry, there. yeah. All moment. right. My number one board game component of all time. 
Uh, honestly, I think this is probably the one that people w would have most expected to be on this list somewhere. Okay. Um, and, and it's from Everdell, which I think right away you're going to know which component I'm talking about. Um, there's yeah. a, one component in there that is just the most valuable component in the box, the most beautiful component in the box, and something that I think people buy the game just for, for the table presence of this alone. Obviously, talking of the marketing pamphlet that comes in Everdell. Oh, God, what can I say about this? As soon as you open the box, it's the first thing you see on top, and you almost don't want to go and even go through the rest of the box, punch no. the components, and get everything out, because it only gets worse as you go down. Yeah. It, it's around the top. It has all the, the next games coming out. You can look and see what your next purchase is going to be instead of focusing on the one that you just bought, like a sucker. And it's just like, there's some marketing pamphlets, it's literally just a single page. This is, this is like borderline book. Like, it I is... Like, I, I will say when I when I opened up the Everdell box and I saw this pamphlet, um, I we were gonna have a whole we had a whole gaming night planned out mm -hmm. and I just literally read the pamphlet to my gaming group yeah and they just stood there in awe. I know and and it, it becomes a, it, board game hour becomes story hour and, yeah. and no one regrets it. It's it's just that's the effect that this pamphlet has. It's it's honestly it's such a great. Oh, you, you know what? This is actually, yeah. This is actually this is the board game. Marking pamphlet from pictures. Yeah. Oh. oh, sorry. Yeah, so no, sorry. My number one uh, board game point of all time is the marking pamphlet from pictures. Yeah, pictures. That's, sorry, that's, not, what, that's yeah, what I meant. Not ever done. Yeah, yeah I was, uh, it's all these Rio Grande games. Yeah, yeah. Pictures. Uh, the the board game marketing pamphlet from pictures is by far just. I mean, every time I open pictures, it's the first thing on top. Yeah. I don't even want to look at the other components aside from the shoelace, and it's just yeah. You hit, like you just have a great time sitting around. This is honestly the best thing to bring camping, so that you can just sit around the fire and just you know, share yeah. all the board games you could be buying. We talk a lot about story games, mm -hmm. right? Sleeping Gods, Frosthaven, yeah. you know, Oathsworn, they ha all have their own stories. But this, you know, from pictures specifically, I think is honestly, m in my opinion, probably the best game um, yeah. in terms of um, board game storytelling oh. uh, by far. And the fact that like the book in Frosthaven or Oathsworn is, it's a thick journal of story. Yeah. And I would much rather just sit at home cozy and reading this marketing pamphlet than I would ever want to sit down and read the story of either of those games. Yeah, there's so many more games in this pamphlet yeah. than just the book of Sleeping Gods yeah. or any other game. Yeah, this is this is like planning your entire board game future for the next few years of all the games you can play specifically from Rio Grande. Yeah, but just reading about them and that gives you that experience yeah. in a magical way. I have nostalgia tied to this. It is by far my number one greatest board game component uh, of all time. A great choice. Um, Thank you. I think Thank you. one that was completely obvious, I think, to everyone out yeah. there. Oh, yeah. Um, but it makes sense. It makes Thanks. sense. Absolutely, yeah. That's it. Those are the top 10 board game, greatest board game components of all time. Ooh. My five, your five. As always, let us know in the comments which of these you agree with, which of them you don't agree with. Let us know what your uh, top 10, top five greatest board game components of all time are. We'd love to see your picks. See, we can kind of let you know where they ranked on our million uh, entry list, um, where like some of yours would have ranked on ours. Um, we always love to hear from you. So thanks again. If you want to support us on Patreon, we have Patreon. If you want to join our Discord, you can join us there and we can talk more about board game components. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Ciao.